Yo, what's good everybody? Uh, today I'm going to be covering the best shooter formations in the game. Uh, earlier this week uh, I had released the best vehicle formations um, based on a picture that had been circulating around the internet. Uh, I found out the creators um, is a Lash Shelter Discord actually. <clears throat> um, so I'll be leaving the link there and giving credits uh, to the judges and the people who curated this picture. So, first things first, um, shooters are very strong, uh, they counter vehicles, um, and they're weak against fighters, uh, for those who are very new. Um, so the first formation we see uh, gets a rating out of 10, um, it's Deus Ex, Cochet, and the Nomad. So Deus Ex is a frontline tank hero. His second ability, uh, he basically just takes 30% less damage, so it's just a pre-battle buff for the entire game. Um, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, as is the case with everybody, uh, their third and fourth is just resistance and might, um, and this number will change depending on if they're seasoned heroes, if they're orange heroes, um, etc. His fifth ability, um, Heaven's Rage. So, when he's in battle, um, whenever two random enemy squads cast skills or deal basic attacks, uh, they take 5% damage. Um, and this can stack a maximum of 8 times. So this is again another pre-battle skill. Um, it essentially just selects two random squads, enemy squads, um, and every time they use any skills or um, yeah, basic attacks, uh, they just take damage. Um, so it's pretty good. It lasts forever. Um, which is strong. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're CC'd, nothing like that really matters. His sixth ability, um, Awaken. So this ability, basically everybody gets plus might and resistance, and everybody gets bonus to the Dictator skill, which is the first one. Uh, you just get more troops. The third uh, kind of skill is what changes. So Deus Ex gets HP plus 15%. Um, HP is the best defensive stat in the game. Uh, it's better than resistance. Uh, this, this is just how the game calculations work. Um, so HP is a very good stat. Generally when you see HP in the sixth skill, it means they're a defensive hero. Um, now they've introduced this, where you can kind of see where they fall in, um, which is good. But yeah, HP indicates they're defensive. Usually you want to tank your heroes in the front because uh, they're going to get attacked more. His seventh ability, he just gets plus might. And then his eighth is pretty cool. So it's chase down. Uh, on the first three turns, all friendly units take 20% less damage. And there's an additional 50% chance to recover units whenever damage is taken. So this is similar to Tuck Priestess. So just whenever damage is taken, there's a 50% chance to recover 45%. Um, also, they get tankier, so it's a buff to every squad. And this only lasts for the first three turns, though. If it lasted the whole game, he would be insanely, insanely good. Um, so yeah, he's basically just a tanky, buffy hero. Um, he doesn't... It doesn't even matter, really, if he CC'd or anything like that. He kind of just sits there and tanks tanks damage, uh, deals damage throughout the entire game, he's very consistent, um, and he can recover some troops. So Koshe uh, is actually kind of similar to Deus Ex, he's a defensive uh, shooter hero as well. His second ability, uh, so after he basic attacks, there's an 80% chance to decrease damage taken by 20%. So this basically just makes him tankier. Um, and this will last for two turns and it is stackable. So this could go significantly higher than 20%. Um, and then he just becomes like an unkillable demon god. Uh, what's cool is that uh, Ambush, uh, so his fifth ability, is a 50% chance to deal 310 damage to one random enemy after his basic attacks. And then he recovers troops um, for himself at a 67% rate. So basically, if he basic attacks, there's a 50% calculation to whether or not this ability activates. 
Uh, his sixth ability, another HP plus 15. Again, this will indicate he's a defensive hero. He gets resistance for his seventh. And then his eighth um, kind of works along with these two because this is a basic attack. Or this depends on basic attacks um, as well as his second skill. But anyway, his eighth skill is a 35% chance to make two random friendly enemy squads attack twice uh, with 30% increased damage for two turns. So theoretically, if he puts this on himself, um, he, he will then attack twice. There's a double chance for this 80% uh, damage buff, or I guess uh, damage reduction buff. So this could stack, and again, there's a double 50% chance to deal this as well. So that's pretty cool. He has self-synergy, which is always nice to see. Then we have the Nomad. Uh, so the Nomad is a ranged shooter. Ranged generally means they should sit in the back row, um, and they're going to be dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, they're basically glass cannons. So his second ability, uh, Blinding Shot. Uh, there's a 35% chance to attack again after basic attacks to the same target, dealing 742% damage, and they're unable to recover troops. So this is very, very good. Um, troop recovery is definitely in the meta. I mean, we've already seen, at least for the shooter formations, Deus Ex and Koshe both have recoveries. Um, a lot of the fighter heroes have recoveries. A lot of the Season X... Um, vehicle heroes have recoveries, so this is very big. It's a pretty low chance, but it is after basic attacks, and this damage is just huge. His fifth ability, there's a 40% chance to deal 455 damage to one enemy, and it'll increase his own basic attack damage um, for one turn by 60%. His sixth ability gives him just damage plus 15, very good for a glass cannon. He gets might. And then his eighth ability is his own basic attacks are increased by 100%. Period. Additionally, when the enemy is tallying skill range, this squad is considered to be plus one range away. So I'm going to explain this after, but I just want to talk about this basic attack um, kind of increase. So he increases all of his basic attack damage by 100%, no matter what. He has this um, kind of blinding shot ability, which makes him want to basic attack more. And then he also has uh, his fifth ability increases his basic attack damage yet again. So you can see that there's very good synergy with him and Koshe because Koshe's eighth ability um, gives people the opportunity to attack twice, which means, yeah, this could trigger twice, this will increase twice, and it's all it's always going to be increased by 100. So very very good in conjunction with basic attack heroes. Now as for the second part of this, the uh, when the enemy has Italian skill range, this squad is considered to be plus one range away. I'm basically going to explain that by using a battle report. Um, so is the kill event this week so yeah um, so basically uh, the way that these battle reports work is this is the front line this is the middle and this is the back row hero and similarly for the enemy this is the front middle back row line so generally how range works is let's say you're in the back line this hero let's say they have a, a skill of range five you count from the heroes in front. So one, two, three, four, five. So basically uh, a skill of range five, if you're in the back line, can hit all three of the enemies. Now you're not gonna ever target your friendly squad, so that's not something to worry about, but it basically just gives you the opportunity to attack any of these three. What's very interesting about Nomad's skill that plus one range means that if a hero is in the back line, they need a skill with effective range of six to reach him because it'll go one, two, three, four, and then five, six. 
Now, almost no abilities actually have range of five, which basically means Nomad is very rarely gonna get hit. Um, pretty much what you have to do is you'd have to put backline heroes, so for example, Knight, you would actually wanna put her in the middle in order to have the opportunity to attack the Nomad. Um, so it, it, it it's a pretty interesting skill. It's very good. Um, I'm assuming in the next wave of X heroes there will probably be some heroes with uh, range of six to counter him, but I, I don't know. So that's that's kind of how that range system worked. Um, so as mentioned, that's a very good lineup. Um, you have a lot of tanky buffs, and you have very good damage from Nomad, and there's a lot of basic attack synergy between everybody. Um, going down the next, so that's at 10 out of 10, I guess that's what the judges scored it. Uh, moving down, the next formation is basically the exact same. You're just replacing Koshe with Deus Ex in the front line, and it works almost exactly the same. Um, I'm not really sure why one is better than the other, uh, but I guess, you know, through, through the testing of of these folks who made this, um, Deus Ex in the front works better. Probably just because you want to keep Koshe alive longer, um, and you don't really care if Deus Ex gets killed or if he gets CC'd. Um, he's kind of only there for buffs and debuffs and in the first three turns anyway, so I'm assuming that's why. Uh, moving down, we have Valkyrie introduced. Um, so Valkyrie is a support shooter. Uh, her second ability. Uh, so for the first two turns, two random squads will move first. So two random friendly squads. Um, they didn't put it in there, but it's two friendly squads will move first. Period. Um, the way that uh, kind of order works in this game, so squad order works, is through combat speed. Um, so whoever has the highest combat speed is going to go first, the second highest goes second, etc., etc. This basically just means ignore combat speed completely and just have these two squads go first, no matter what. They could have less combat speed and it doesn't matter. This is good because shooters um, don't actually have the highest combat speed. Uh, vehicles generally always have the highest combat speed. Um, and if you're going up against shooters, you're going to go first, so this is good. Additionally, on the second turn, deal 687 damage to two random enemy squads. So that the way you want to deal with, with multiple squads is you basically take this damage number, multiply it by 2. Um, so what is this? 1374, I think. Uh, 1374 damage is pretty damn big, but this is only once, um, because it's just on the second turn. Their fifth ability, Explosive Trap. Uh, for the first three turns, two random enemy squads will take additional damage. So yeah, just a debuff. 50% is pretty huge though. And this is for three turns on two random squads. So you can think of it as 100% additional damage. Her sixth ability just gives herself plus damage. Uh, she's a might hero. And her eighth ability on the first three turns, two random friendly shooter squads deal 50% additional damage. So I mean, basically the exact same as Explosive Trap. Uh, it's just a buff instead of a debuff. So, plus 100, essentially, for three turns. The enemies will be taking plus 100, so plus 200 for three turns. Um, is essentially what she does. And then you'll... I mean... It doesn't, you, you, it doesn't need to go on yourself, but if it does, this is going to obviously be dealing a shit ton of damage. So, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Valkyrie's interesting, because she's basically only on the first three turns. After that, she just becomes a basic attack hero. She doesn't really provide anything, um, which is a very interesting mechanic. It's kind of a, you know, win, get an early advantage first, and then win uh, through that way. Um, but that's Valkyrie. So she's in the front line because, again, it doesn't really matter. She's, she's not HP. She doesn't have defense. Um, but it doesn't really matter if she dies <laughs> or even gets CC'd. All of these are pre-battle skills. So basically she can just tank hits, die, and it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, then we'll see the Betrayed in the middle. Um, 
So the Betrayed's a pretty cool hero. He says he's ranged, uh, but generally you're not going to find him in the back row. Um, so the Betrayed, his second ability, 30% chance to deal 641 to two random enemy squads. So again, multiply this by two, uh, we get 1282. And provides 40% additional might for himself and for the back row squad on the next two attacks for two turns. So this is the reason why you'll never basically find him in the back row. Um, I'm not positive, but I actually do not believe that this stacks. Which means if he's in the back row, it's only going to be plus 40 to himself. Whereas if he's in the middle or theoretically in the front, um, and him and the back row will get 40, so 80. Moving on, his fifth ability, there's a 35% chance to deal 402 damage to one random enemy squad within range, and before the back row squad, the next action, deal 403% damage uh, to one enemy squad within the range of four from the back row squad. This is a very long skill, but all it means is you're gonna immediately deal 402 damage, and then when the back row squad uh, takes their turn, just an additional 403% damage is going to be affected. So it's a decent damage, 805 at a 35% chance. It's not amazing. There's no CC. It's just it's just damage. His sixth just gives himself plus damage, uh, 15. Um, so you can already see with this additional damage or that additional might. Um, and then this plus damage and then plus might. Uh, he does some pretty good damage. Um, his eighth ability is pretty cool. Um, so it's kind of like a roulette wheel. Um, during combat, his squad has a chance to obtain one of the following random bonuses um, and only one. Uh, so either he has, he'll restore some troops, uh, recovery 100. Um, he, his might increases by 60%, his resistance can increase by 60%, his tactical might or his tactical resistance will increase by 60%. Um, or the damage taken uh, will be decreased by 40%. So they're all pretty good, um, pretty good buffs. Uh, so it doesn't really matter, but this is kind of cool. Um, so that's the Betrayed. Uh, he's, he's, he's decent, um, pretty good. He's an X-Hero. Uh, he doesn't really need to be synergized with anybody. Um, you do kind of want to put him in kind of attack focus lineups um, just because of this buff to back row squads. So you do kind of want to put him with uh, back row heroes that do a lot of damage, um, which we'll see with, you know, being lined up with the Nomad um, in, this, in this formation. Uh, similarly, oh yeah, and one of the reasons why, so the reason why Valkyrie is in there is because Valkyrie and Betrayed are basically just going to um, buff people a shit ton, debuff people a shit ton, um, and then the back row hero theoretically will just be doing so much, so much damage. Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of why Valkyrie's in here. Um, moving down, so that, that was given a 9.9. .9. Um, I mean, essentially, anything like 9.5 or above is a very, very good lineup. Um, and you even have the chance of beating some of the higher, uh, the higher formations uh, above them, um, just based on how RNG works and if skills get procced or not. Um, so keep that in mind. Just because you have a 10 out of 10 does not mean you can win everything against shooters. And that's just not even considering parts or tech or anything like that. So, if we go further down, the first the 9.8, uh, instead of Valkyrie, you just put in Deus Ex. Um, that's fine, we've already gone over Deus Ex, he's just a pretty good all around hero. Uh, so nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, let me just get this very quickly. So, moving down, we see Deus Ex, The Betrayed, and Hummingbird. So Hummingbird is very similar to the Nomad, um, she's a back row glass cannon, does a shit ton of damage, has no real defensive abilities, um, and that's that. So here's Hummingbird, pretty scandalous if I do say so, 
but that's that's not what we're here for. So her second ability, Fan the Hammer, there's a 40% chance to attack twice. Each attack deals 142 damage, basically. Um, this isn't a very good skill, in my opinion. Uh, 284 is pretty damn low, especially for a 40% uh, chance, so it's not like it's an 80% chance or anything like that. Um, so it's pretty low. But her fifth ability, there's a 30% chance with a one turn prep to deal 310 to all enemy squads. So multiply this by three, um, and that gives 930. Additionally, makes enemy fighters not able to recover units, um, enemy vehicles, it subtracts their combat skill damage by 50%, and enemy shooters will be disarmed for one turn. Um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, I'll just mention that disarmed basically means they can't basic attack. Uh, that, that's what this is saying. So this is pretty cool because it's a lot of damage, and depending on the enemy unit type, um, different things occur. Which is cool. A lot of the, some of the other heroes you'll see, they just target, you know, one specific unit type. Uh, but Hummingbird covers them all. Her sixth ability, damage plus 15. Like I said, she's a glass cannon. Uh, oddly enough, she gives plus resistance in her seventh skill. You'd think this would be plus might, but it is what it is. And then her eighth ability um, is really what pumps out the damage. So it's called Charge Shot. It's a 60%, which is very high. However, it's a two turn prep. I think it's actually the only two turn prep skill in the game, which makes her very vulnerable. Um, and, the, and if this occurs on the seventh or eighth uh, turn, it, I mean, it's completely useless. Anyway, it deals 863, and I love this. It just says massive damage uh, to two random squads. So you would multiply this by two, and you get what 1726 i believe damage so that's insane um the most damage in the game at a pretty high rate uh, but like i said it is a two turn prep skill so that's hummingbird she does a shit ton of damage she's very good um and yeah uh, 9.7 so partnered up with the betrayed the betrayed my buffer um Yeah, and he'll just be dealing damage, he'll be dealing damage, Deus Ex will be tanking and potentially healing. So, very good, very good formation. Moving down, we'll see Deus Ex Hummingbird Nomad. So this is a super, super heavy attack uh, focused formation. Um, we have two of this, the, I guess, deadliest heroes in the game in the same APC. The reason why you want Nomad in the back is that plus one range tallying thing on his eighth eighth ability? Um, basically, just puts him out of range of everybody, uh, which is insanely overpowered in my opinion. Moving down, we see the Inquisitor and the Patriot, uh, along with Valkyrie in the front. Uh, we've already covered Valkyrie. But what's interesting is uh, Inquisitor is on this. Um, the Inquisitor is a season two hero, actually. Uh, his second ability. He has a 30% chance with a one turn prep to attack all squads for 237. So, like I always say, multiply by three, almost 750 damage. Uh, and he'll disarm all of the squad, which is pretty good. And this lasts for two turns, the disarm. So, yeah, this is all around a good skill. Not much else to say. Uh, his fifth ability for the first three turns, it'll increase damage caused from shooters by 50% to all enemy squads. So this is very good. Um, it basically just means if you have three shooter squads, uh, you'll be dealing 50% more damage uh, for three turns. Coupled with Valkyries, which basically does the same thing twice. Um, it's, what, plus... Yeah, I don't know, plus a shit ton of damage. <laughs> Since this is for all squads, you can think of it as plus 150, and then with Valkyries, plus 100 and minus 100. Uh, it's a lot. 350. I don't know why that took me so long, but basically 350% increased damage. So it's very cool. Cool synergy. His sixth ability is damage, again. Uh, he's a might hero. And his eighth ability, uh, there's a 35% chance to deal 315% damage to two squads, so 630. Uh, 
time. If the target is in flammable status, there's a 50% chance to put it into a suppressed state. Uh, suppressed is basically the best CC. Well, I, I think confusion is actually the best CC, but suppressed is very good. Uh, it's better than disarm and silence. Uh, suppress, you can think of it as a petrify in other games. Uh, they basically can't do anything for two turns. So, Inquisitor's pretty good in my opinion. He's not great. The reason is he, he can never put units in a flammable status by himself. Um, basically, the only way that he can get targets in a flammable status is through other heroes. Um, and right now, there's actually only one hero, the Executioner, who does that. So th this it definitely hurts Inquisitor. But uh, we see him paired up with the, the Patriot. Um, Patriot's just a gunslinging cowboy, I guess. So his second ability for the first three turns, the front row shooter squad has 70% chance to counterattack, and the counterattack deals 250% damage. So this is a very strong counterattack. 250 is a lot. Um, but it's only for the first three turns and it is a percentage chance. So this is just, you know, an interesting skill. Um, you can basically match it up with anybody and it doesn't really matter. His fifth ability, Volley, there's a 35% chance with a one turn prep to deal 306 damage to three enemy squads. So basically 918. Um, additionally, it'll lower their might, resistant, tactical might, and tactical resistance by 38%. So this is huge. Um, all squads get debuffed significantly to each one of their stats. So that's four different stats. Um, so theoretically, if you wanted to, you could multiply this by four and by three um, because it's to all three. So you'll see that this is doing a lot. It's very significant. Um, Let's see, if we did the math, it's about a hundred, it's, it's almost, it's over 400% debuff. Uh, so that's actually huge. However, it's a pretty low percent chance and it is a prep skill, uh, but nevertheless. His sixth ability just is just a plus damage. Um, he's a might hero. And then his eighth ability, um, for the first three turns, two random friendly squads have a 70% chance to be sober. Uh, I don't know why they call it this, but essentially they're just immune to all CC, so silent, disarm, suppressed, and confusion, and they're given a 55% might increase. So this is very good, it's only on the first three turns, um, which hurts it a little, but nevertheless, very good skill. Uh, and that's that's the Patriot, so he, he basically just gives a lot of buffs, significant debuffs, um, and doesn't do that much damage himself. So, moving on, um, that, that, actually I'll talk about that formation for a little bit. So it's a little strange, in my opinion. Um, I don't really recognize how it, how it could be that good. Um, like I said, Inquisitor is a little strange to be in there. Um, but, hey, I guess it works, so. I would probably just retrofit him, um, you know, maybe Koshe in the front, and the Valkyrie in the middle, and then Patriot. Um, I think that would actually be a good squad because uh, Patriot gives that counterattack. Um, well, actually, I don't think the counterattack is a basic attack. So anyway, um, enough about that theory crafting. If you guys know why that this 9.6 formation is, is rated as a 9.6, please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you guys have any battle reports of this, uh, yeah, please feel free to share them with me. Uh, very interested in, in all of the data. Um, so the nine, the, going down the 9.5, um, we see Deus Ex, which we've covered. We see Nomad, which we've covered. But then we get introduced to Wings of Liberty. Um, so this is a pretty cool formation. Uh, Deus Ex, you know, very tanky. Got some recovery. Wings of Liberty, uh, his second ability, there's a 40% chance to deal uh, with a one turn prep to deal 486 to two random squads, so almost a thousand. Um, and it'll also debuff their m resistance by 47% for two turns. So, all around good skill. Decent damage, good debuff. Um, yeah. 
his fifth ability for the first two turns. Uh, two random enemy squads will be disarmed. And on the second turn, he will deal 276 to all enemy squads. So a little over 750 damage. Uh, pretty good, but this only happens once. However, the disarm is solid. Uh, if I wish this disarmed three enemy squads, he'd be better. But it is what it is. Um, so he actually is given plus combat speed, which is which is quite cool. Um, it's only for him for for so the sixth ability only works for the squad that the hero is in, uh, which basically just means he'll go before most of his teammates. Um, yeah. So his eighth ability, it's a 35% chance to deal 343 with a one turn prep to two enemy squads. Um, so 686, and it'll heal himself and a random friendly squad for 97%. So it's pretty high recovery. It's times two, almost 200% recovery. Um, and he's dealing pretty solid damage, almost 700. However, it's a pretty low chance and it is a prep. Uh, his resistance hero, all around pretty solid. Debuffs, some decent damage, uh, CCs, some some more damage, um, additionally more damage, and then some some pretty pretty solid recovery. Uh, so that's Wings of Liberty. Nothing great. So he's, he's certainly not like the best hero by any means. Um, he's just a pretty solid all around uh, hero. And he can basically go into any lineup, which is which is pretty nice. So yeah, uh, then we just get to the Nomad. I mean, there's really no reason not to put Nomad in a formation if you have him. If you have him, very very strong hero. Uh, going down, we see basically the exact same formation, just with Hummingbird instead of Nomad. Like I said, the only reason why you would really do this is if you didn't have Nomad. Uh, but yeah, Hummingbird's very very good as well. Uh, so it's not like you know, you're losing out on on a ton. Um, you will notice that this is actually an updated image. So on the right hand side, uh, we'll see that these are unranked combinations. Um, these are basically pre X heroes. So pre season X formations. I'll be making another video shortly covering these heroes. Um, and this goes all the way from season four down to normal orange heroes uh, so the so the second part will be much better for kind of newer players um, anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed um oh we'll be making like i said the next iteration of the shooters video i'll be making the fighters formations as well as some of the mixed uh, apc formations i do believe that mixed is the best possible formations that you can get uh, especially if you have Bane Blade parts, so that's that's at this point that's for the very very high end players. Um, but I still think that even without Bane Blade, um, some of the mixed APCs are, are incredibly strong. Uh, for example, uh, Tech Priestess, Cannoness, and Hummingbird. Uh, it's definitely one of the strongest APCs in the game, if not the strongest. Um, every APC has weaknesses, uh, but the reason why you have a mixed is, is you kind of try to flush out some of those weaknesses. So for example, fighters are weak to vehicles, but shooters are strong against vehicles. So what happens is if a vehicle unit is sent there, um, they're obviously going to do more damage to the two fighter heroes, but Hummingbird is just going to absolutely tear them apart because she's a shooter. Uh, APC. So. That's, that's definitely one of the reasons why it makes APCs. And then Bane Blade basically just makes it so it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need, it's not specific, so it's not unit type specific, like Phantom or Ranger or Dreadnought parts are. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely be seeing mixed APCs basically all over the board, um, especially as people are getting more and more Bane Blade sets. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or you want to see anything more or you want me to dig in detail or even show battle reports uh, of these heroes. I can definitely get that, that for you guys. Um, so yeah, take care. Have a good day. Stay safe. Um, 
Good luck. Peace.